Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Lois put on Christ, so in Christ may she be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Friends, we have gathered here today to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Lois Purdom. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. At this time, as you are able, would you please stand and the hymnals are in the pews if you would turn to hymn number 77 and sing with us, How Great Thou Art.
Please be seated. And would you please join with me in an attitude of prayer? O oh God, who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Give us now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying our life may be in you, and that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our first Old Testament lesson today, and it is a bit unusual to have two Old Testament lessons, especially two Old Testament lessons of the same psalm. This selection was dictated to, well, to her daughters by Lois. She also chose the hymns, by the way. So enjoy the last hymn today because it's not one that any of us would have chosen, I'm pretty sure. Lois selected Psalm 34. It's not the longest psalm in the Bible, but it's not the shortest one either. So it's divided into two sections for you today. And I invite you to begin the process of trying to discern why Lois wrote this psalm down. Hear the first half of Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you, his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Okay. 
And now, the second half of Psalm 34. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. This time, uh, Corey has some words from the family. Good morning. On behalf of Lois's family, I'd like to thank you all for being here today to join us in celebrating her life. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Corey Purdom Matthias, Lois's granddaughter, the oldest daughter of her son, David. My sister, Amy, and I were fortunate to have grown up less than 15 minutes down the road from my grandparents and have so many fond memories of time spent with Grandma and Granddaddy Purdom. I'd like to start with a reading from Proverbs that was a shared favorite of her and I. Proverbs 3, 3 through 6. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Love and faithfulness are definitely two words that come to mind when I think of Grandma. She loved people, especially her friends, family, and husband, Ray. She and my grandfather met at a barn dance in Frederick when she was only 15 years old. They began dating and got married three years later. They were married for an amazing 74 years and loved one another deeply. Anyone who knew them knows that they were opposites in many ways. She was a social butterfly who could talk for hours and he was a man of very few words, but they complimented each other and built a wonderful life full of love together. Grandma took great pride in hosting family gatherings and cooking delicious meals for her loved ones. My grandparents always had a big vegetable garden and she enjoyed serving fresh vegetables, but she also worked hard to can some veggies that we could savor year round. My favorite was her green beans. She knew it and served them almost every time I came over. Nobody makes garden fresh green beans quite like grandma. Other favorites were her deviled eggs, potato salad, and of course the variety of peanut butter and chocolate desserts that she was great at making. Who doesn't love that combination, right? Her chocolate peanut butter bars were my husband John's favorite and she always made sure to make extras and set some aside for us to take home and enjoy. Our family gatherings involved all of us sitting around the dining room table talking and playing cards. She and Granddaddy both loved card games and she taught us how to play Canasta and Tripoli. We had hours of fun together laughing and sharing each other's company. My grandparents both loved to dance and have a good time. Grandma planned great parties like the retirement bash that she threw for my grandfather and their 50th wedding anniversary party. I think the whole family has fond memories of those days spent together. She celebrated life, had a great sense of humor, and an infectious laugh. They also loved to travel, enjoying trips to Florida, Hawaii, and Aruba. When we were kids, they would rent a big house down in the Carolina beaches for a week each summer, and we'd go down with all my aunts, uncles, and cousins and have a fun-filled vacation together, catching waves, building sandcastles, hunting for seashells, playing arcade games, doing puzzles, picking up freshly baked donuts, and going out for yummy seafood dinners. These are memories that I'll treasure forever, and I hope to pass down that same love of family to my own children. Not only did she love and care for her family, 
She also exhibited her faithfulness by always being willing to help in her community. She had a servant heart and was a shining example of sharing the love of Jesus with others. Growing up, I remember her constant involvement in the church. She helped organize the volunteers for patting oysters at the church dinners and helped make sure the church thrift shop ran smoothly. This meant that we also helped pat oysters and volunteered in the thrift shop, but we wouldn't have had it any other way. We enjoyed working alongside her to bless those around us. She encouraged us to attend vacation Bible school at this church and was, uh, and s s helped us develop a relationship with the Lord. Sorry. She was also an active member in the local Daughters of the American Revolution chapter and was instrumental along with my parents in helping lead their efforts to restore the local historic Purdom Family Cemetery where several of our ancestors, including John Purdom, a Revolutionary War patriot, are buried. She was born and raised in Damascus and took great pride in her heritage and her community. She also taught us to have a heart of gratitude. I think the beginning of that psalm reflected that and talking about having uh, praise for the Lord at all times. So I'd like to share a list that she made of items that she was thankful for. Uh, that the Lord has given, I'm gonna say it in her words, has given me good health to a ripe old age. I've been blessed with a supportive, faithful husband for over 70 years, for three children, five grandchildren, and eight great-grandchildren. I've always had food to eat and all the necessities of life. For all my friends I know, I'm blessed to have lots of them. To have a good mother and father that stood by me and taught me the most important things in life. Ray and I had good supportive jobs and made good benefits. We were fortunate to be able to travel in later years all over the USA and some trips overseas. To keep my faith in God through the ups and downs of life, and I've been fortunate enough to help other people by leading exercise, helping with church projects, the thrift shop, and church dinners in the American Legion. She truly was an example of a life well lived. She was very proud of her three children, five grandchildren, and eight great-grandchildren. She delighted in spending time with us and hearing about our adventures. She will be deeply missed and forever treasured. I wanna close with words that my daughter Chloe added to the slideshow photos that we created to celebrate Grandma's memory. Um, and I think this reflects the feelings of all of her family, her children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Um, the words are appropriate and heartfelt. She said, this is an I love you from everyone. You were amazing. You would teach us things and always made small talk. Thank you for always being there for us. Love you forever. Thank you. I share with you now these words from the Gospel of John selection of verses from chapter 14. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. I will not leave you orphaned. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. I've said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. As I said, I believe Sharon said to me, Psalm 34, and if you recall, my, my eyebrows went up. I, I understand certain Psalms, why people request them, but Psalm 34 was new for me. And I said then, when we were talking, I really want to try to figure out what it is that Lois found in that Psalm that she wanted read today. 
Well, I spent several hours poring over all the commentaries and things and sitting back and thinking. It only took four or five hours, so I'm going to share all of that with you today. I'm only kidding. I think, I think I understand why she chose this psalm. It's in the first verse. How could we miss it? I will bless the Lord at all times. What a statement. But it goes on. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Wow. Lois is part of the generation in this congregation that are legendary. And we are their legacy. That means we have a responsibility. Legends, oh, legends are impossible to uh, overtake in their importance and their power. But the legacy is something that must be examined to be a proper legacy. This psalm goes on, my soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. You know, when you're a legend, I think it's difficult to be humble. I think it was Mac Davis that sang that song, oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. Legends are perfect in our mindsets. We think of those legends that came before us and we go, wow, if I could only be like them. But if you ask a lot of those legends, they say, I'm not that big a deal. They leave us a legacy. Magnify the Lord with me, the psalmist says, and let us exalt his name together. Lois, Lois was part of that generation. She and her family moved into their home here in Damascus in 1953. Now, I wasn't here in 1953. Actually, I wasn't anywhere in 1953. It took a few more years for me to come around. But Damascus, I am certain, was different. This was farm country. It went from here, well, down county. It went into Carroll County and Frederick County and Howard County. It was farmland. This was a place where dreams were made and came true. Our preschool was named after part of this area, and it's called Pleasant Plains because that's part of Damascus. This was a place for people to settle down and become legends. Lois and her family moved into that home in 1953. They became part of this congregation, and seven years later, they built this building. Now, I don't know if everyone understands in 1960 what a construction project like this one would have been, but it must have seemed impossible to some. There are some people you just can never convince or satisfy, but they built it, and it grew. There were a lot of oyster dinners and turkey dinners involved in that whole process, and apparently there was a lot of potato salad involved in that process. I, I checked with the ladies downstairs today because apparently the potato salad I thought was legendary, but it's not. It is a tradition. That's what I was told. I do know this in my personal beliefs. There is a tremendous uh, bowl of potato salad on the banqueting table in heaven every day. I'm very certain of that. You can find out later today about that. 30 years she worked in the Montgomery County Board of Education. In those days, Montgomery County was the place you wanted your children to go to school because it was the best in this state. I know that because my father was one of those teachers in Montgomery County. 
And the Montgomery County Board of Education had a commitment in those days to take care of the students, to take care of the teachers, to take care of the staff, and to take care of the families. Back in those days in Montgomery County, going to school in this county, it was a family. It was special. And Lois was part of that. I didn't know what a travel club was when you mentioned that to me. I figured out, well, they must have traveled quite a bit. But I do know what this congregation was to this community, and I know what Harwood House still is along with this congregation. It's a tradition. It's the center of the town. It's Damascus. The psalm goes on. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. Lois is part of that generation. They lived through some difficult, difficult times in history. I know that the world has lived through some difficult times in the past four or five years, but they lived through eras of difficulty. They saw world wars. They lived with the fear of nuclear annihilation. They lived through depression when food was scarce. People didn't know what tomorrow would bring, so they learned how to live today to its absolute fullest. What was it that kept them going? They had a tradition, a tradition of faith. They cried out to God. And according to this psalm, God heard their cry and answered it. Fear the Lord. You, his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. What a legacy we are supposed to be. What a tradition we've inherited from Lois and all of her generation. Those who cry out to the Lord will have no want. We'll still have a lot of desires and we'll have a lot of things that we think are needs but according to this, there will be no want. But listen to what Lois wanted us to, to inherit. Listen to what she says through the psalmist. Come, O children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Well, here's the secret. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil, do good, seek peace, and pursue it. My heavens, what a lesson for all of us. Wouldn't it be nice if the whole world could read this psalm together and take it to heart? I see you shaking your head there. That's what we inherit from Lois. That's why she chose this psalm. This is a lesson. We're the children, and we're hearing what we're supposed to do. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is what? It is against evildoers, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, it says... The Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. If you are brokenhearted today, and some of you very well should be and are, don't be afraid. That's normal. But the Lord is near to you and will save your crushed spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, 
So often in the world today, we think, you know, if you do all the good stuff and you follow the rules, then life's going to be perfect. And here is the psalmist saying, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now, I know that Lois had afflictions in her life. Everyone does. Many are those afflictions. And sometimes they begin to wear at us and challenge our faith. But those persons of faith, that tradition of faith, cries out to us, the Lord redeems the life of His servants. Lois gave us a tremendous, tremendous lesson of faith. It's a tradition. And yeah, she is a legend here in this place. And she always will be. But you are the legacy. Now you have a responsibility to tell that good story, to share that beautiful, beautiful legacy that you have inherited from Lois and her generation. As I said, the hymns today, I understood how great thou art. Sure, that makes sense. Because he lives, absolutely it makes sense. Leaning on the everlasting arms, as I shared with you, I remembered as a kid playing the piano at revivals in the deep hills of West Virginia. It was not exactly a somber moment. People were stomping their feet, clapping their hands, and shouting hallelujah. So why that hymn? Because this is what Lois did. She leaned on those everlasting arms. And now, those everlasting arms enfold her for eternity. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we come before you this day in the midst of mourning as we walk through the valley of grief. We ask that your Spirit rest upon us and all those who grieve this day. We know that you walk with them and that there will be that new day when they experience the light of your love and grace. Enfold them as you have enfolded Lois. We give thanks this day for her witness to you, her ministry among us, and we commit ourselves to be a worthy legacy of the faith and tradition that she has passed on to us. So watch over us, we pray. And we lift our prayer to you in Jesus' name. Amen.